Jesus gave great importance to the use of the tongue. You never find much importance given to that in the Old Testament except in the book of Proverbs. The book of Proverbs is about the only book that speaks a lot about the use of the tongue and speech. And in one sense the book of Proverbs has got a lot of new covenant truths back there, but all the other books in the Old Testament it only speaks about your actions and not about the words we speak. Whereas Jesus gave a lot of importance to that. In fact, he said if your words are not what it should be, look the words he uses in verse 34. It's very strong. You brood of vipers. What a word to use about human beings. To tell a human being you're a viper. You're a snake. Because we know that what comes out of the mouth of a viper is poison. We know that a snake stings and a snake bites with its tongue and hurts people. That's why he used the word viper. When you use your word when you use your language and your tongue to hurt somebody else listen to these words you viper Jesus is saying you're exactly like a snake and yet how many christians have taken that seriously there are husbands and wives who are vipers at each other stinging stinging back stinging 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 back and they say they are christians oh we have accepted the lord 25 years ago garbage you shall know them by their fruit and the reason is not that they don't believe they have not repented the trouble with a lot of christians today is they have believed without repenting and when they're not repenting means turning from sin if they have not turned from sin and they believe that faith is empty they live in their sin and say i believe in jesus the world is full of such people and all of that is exposed by the fruit you shall know the tree by its fruit a good tree cannot bring forth bad fruit you brood of vipers verse 34 if you are evil how can you speak what is good it's like saying if the tree is rotten it's going to produce rotten fruit so don't be uh, careful just cut off that fruit you take a scissors and cut it off tomorrow another bad fruit will come then you cut that off day after tomorrow another bad fruit will come it'll keep on coming and that's why you see so many christians who've heard so many messages on holiness and things like that but they never cease to be vipers stinging 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 there needs to be a radical change within that's what jesus is saying he was very strong in his words a lot of people think of jesus as the meek and lowly jesus who loved people but it's because we love people that because jesus loved people that he spoke like that is if a doctor loves a cancer patient he will cut that person open and remove the cancer a doctor who's only interested in making money will tell the patient you're okay you can go home and he, that patient goes home and dies a loving father will correct his children so that they learn to speak properly they learn to speak respectfully an irresponsible father or mother will allow their children to grow up any way they like i've noticed this very much here in the united states a lot of our young children grow up without any respect for older people and the fault is not with them the fault is 100% with their parents who have never taught them to speak respectfully to older people there's something about the culture here i see i've lived with 80 years in a hindu culture 98% of india is non christian and one of the things even in the villages they teach the young children is to be respectful to parents respectful to older people but that's and i'm sure 100 years ago it was exactly like that in the united states where even a young a child will always speak respectfully to older person saying mr so and so or mrs so and so now they don't do that they just call even a person three times their age they call him by their first name it's a complete lack of respect because 
Christianity is gradually disappearing from this country. The values that this country had, America had a hundred years ago is gone. And one mark of it you see it in the children who do not know how to speak respectfully. So be very careful, my dear brothers and sisters, when we speak about wanting to be the light of the world. It's primarily seen in the way we speak. And children learn from their parents. Where do they learn? Where do your children learn language? For example, why is it your children speak a particular language? Because the parents are speaking that language. You go into the villages of India, nobody speaks English. The children don't speak English. Because that's not the language the parents speak. So it's not only language, it's also the way we speak is picked up by our children. So if your children are rude and disrespectful, where do you think they learned it from? They learned it at home. I've seen that also in some of the church, children, our families back in my own home, Bangalore Church. Some, all the children from one family will be very respectful. And all the children from other family will be thoroughly disrespectful. I mean, it's not because the children are different. People say, oh, children are different. But how is it all the children from one family are very respectful in the way they speak, and all the children from another family are disrespectful? All the children from one family are very disciplined and well-behaved. All the others are very unruly and unbehaved. It's got nothing to do with the children. It's got 100% to do with the parents. Take that seriously, my brothers and sisters. Otherwise, however good you may be and however spiritual you may think you are, you'll be raising up another generation to live for the devil. It's a very strong word that Jesus... I never use words as strong as Jesus. I mean, some of the things I said now may sound strong, but I never use the word vipers. Jesus used vipers. Have you stopped for a moment and thought of that? You brood of vipers? Boy, I, I've never heard a preacher use that. Jesus was the strongest preacher of all. And I'll tell you why. Because he knew the reality of heaven and hell more than any other person. He knew that hell is a real place where people who play the fool with God and play the fool with religion will go despite what they say they believe. And I don't want any of my children to go to hell. And that's why I've been very strict with them right from the very young age. I didn't care what other people thought about it. I can't, I try my best to make sure that the children in the churches I preach in will also be like that. But it's not entirely up to me because I see those children one, one day a week. And then they go six days a week to their parents and they may learn something else. So despite all my effort in one day of week to try and bring them up straight, they may not turn up straight. And I've seen that. Because it's all cancelled out by the way that parents talk to each other at home and the parents, are with what they teach their children at home. So I want to share this with you, my brothers and sisters. True Christianity is tested in the way we use our tongue. And he goes on to say, now, whatever you may say, people say, oh, it was accidental what I said. No, don't ever say that. Say what Jesus said in the last part of verse 34. The mouth always speaks what was in the heart all along. It did not come out accidentally in a moment. No. It was in your heart, you suppressed it, suppressed it, suppressed it, and controlled your speech and controlled your speech. But one day, what was in your heart came out. And you say that was accidental. No. I believe the word of Jesus that what I speak comes out of my heart. It cannot come out of my mouth if it's not first in the heart. Like that godly saint said, if you take a cup of sweet water, however much you shake it, only sweet water will come out. But if the water is bitter, you can hide it for a long time, but when you shake it, bitter water comes out. So, what we need, if we want to control our tongue, what we need to do is deal with our heart because it's there, that's the spring from which the words come. <laughs>